Hintle Challenge. I'm down here at the beautiful Hintle Shim Golf Club in Ipswich and I've been joined by the top man, Kieran Dyer, who I hear is double decent at golf. Kieran, how are you doing? I'm good, and you? Not bad at all, mate, not bad at all. Spoonie says you're a golf perv. More like a golf porn star. <laughs> <laughs> Not per perf sounds creepy, but I'm a porn star. Yeah, he's, golf porn he's a star. golf porn star. What yeah. are you playing off? I'm playing a five. Five? Wow. Mm. But saying that, five in Ipswich is a bit different. So when I go to the London Stoke and Stoke Park in the Grove, I'll probably play about a seven. Two shots worse because, as you'll see, the greens are a lot easier. Right. I have a lot of free putts when I play them big groves, uh, greens in London. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Right, I'm off 18. Um, so. Bandit. <laughs> So, I've seen you, Bandit, no way, he's getting cut already. <laughs> That's a lot of people are saying I need to be cut, so yeah. um, do I get a shot on this hole? You do get a shot on this hole. Lovely stuff. Right, let's get cracking on. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And if you watch the channel and haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please. Cheers. Nice one. Let's go. Four! <laughs> right, Kieran, your ledge. Good luck, my friend. I, I wish you bad luck. <laughs> I told you my etiquette's not great. I'm very competitive, Apparently you know. he gets really angry yeah. if he doesn't hit a good shot and smashes stuff up. Oh, Look at that on the shot tracer. Oh. Zinger burger. Can we go in now? <laughs> <I'm done. laughs> I had heart palpitations and everything there. <laughs> that's why he's a five. That's why, that's why he's a five. Look at that. I can see the smile on your face. <laughs> I'm absolutely <laughs> busted. That's my claim to fame. Uh, oh, God. <sighs> if I hit it half as decent as that, I'm happy. Right, come on. Stay there, stay there. Yep, you're in play. We good? You're in play. Yeah. Might, you might have a little bit of tree trouble, but you're in play, you're there for nothing. Yes. Good shot. Kieran, thanks again, mate, for joining me on the four hole challenge. It's an honor, honestly. Oh, I appreciate it, mate, because I didn't even know you played until your good mate Spoony told me. Yeah, I, to be fair, I hated golf. I hated it. And, yeah. Uh, about 2002, Craig Bellamy and Wayne Quinn were massive golfers and obviously I was at Newcastle and they were like, we're going to play golf. So I said, I'll go and play golf. Yeah. He said, have you got any gear and that, like clubs and that? So I can't, I, they said, no, you need clubs. So I went straight to a golf shop, bought the best clubs ever. <laughs> I swear, the best clubs, the best driver, the best golf bag, yeah. the best gear. I looked like Tiger Woods. <laughs> All the gear. On the first hole, couldn't get hit the ball. Second hole, couldn't get the ball. I said, I'm done. Walked in. <laughs> what are you off? Suff sacked off. Gave my clubs to like the chief scout at Newcastle at the time, Charlie, yeah. who's like a close friend and Ipswich connection. Gave it to him and said, never play in that crap game again. And then... What, you gave it like literally two shots? Two shots. Honestly, I was so... Fr honestly, I nearly snapped the driver <laughs> straight away. <laughs> it's so frustrating. Yeah. And then uh, probably about 2012, uh, as you've read my book, I used to take all my friends and their their partners on holiday with me is like my way of giving back yeah like it's like not just me on this adventure i used to bring everyone in yeah, yeah. so i took about five of my friends and their partners to vegas we had a trip on vegas um and when i came back uh my mate mark and his missus they bought me golf lessons because oh, uh, right. mark's a massive golf golf fan yeah. so uh went to this golf lesson it was an hour golf lesson 55 minutes in i'm thinking this is so Hated it. Yeah. And then literally, I swear it was the last five minutes. And you obviously, you when you have lessons, you have a seven iron. I hit this seven iron and I had draw on and it just went about and that was it. That I was hooked. It. Um, yeah. I left there, went straight, bought another set of cups. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you didn't phone up the, uh, the phone up Newcastle. Let me have my yeah. clubs back. I rang up. I, went, I mean, I went straight to a golf shop, bought clubs. And then I just taught myself on the golf course and that's it. Like three, four times a week ever since. Yeah. Ever since. What a game. Oh, it's the best, isn't it? Yeah. Especially when you say you hit that, that, that good yeah, shot. Yeah, once you hit the one shot, you're just like... I say that's better than scoring a goal. Really? Honestly, that's how much. Because at football, I was quite naturally... Good. ...blessed, if yeah. you know what I mean. So it become, comes easy for you, if you know what I mean, to play football. But golf's hard work. Yeah. 
from the mental side and the physical side and then when you hit that out of the sweet spot this just oh that's why I'm a porn star. <laughs> He's a I should have grown a tash for this. <laughs> that walked up like that. <laughs> but who's the best uh, footballer at golf that you played with? Well, we were talking off camera earlier about Jimmy. Uh, the Bulldog. But, but Dwight York is exceptional. I think Dwight York was off too as well. What was great about Dwight is we got flown out to Vegas. Yeah. This massive golf. It was like uh, England versus the rest of the world. So. Uh, it was me, James Milner, Phil L. Jag Jagielka, Teddy Sheringham, uh, there was a few. And then in the rest of the world was Dwight, um, Craig Bellamy, Smichael, Peter Smichael, that yeah. is. So it was great. It was like a Ryder Cup kind of format. Wicked. And what was funny about that, we are in Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> and then you've got to be in the golf course oh, at 7. <laughs> Dwight didn't go to sleep. <laughs> Dwight just used to just rock him from the club, yeah. straight on the bus, straight to Shadow Creek, which is an unbelievable. Yeah. And like, so he's had no sleep. His eyes are usually red anyway, but these were even redder. <laughs> and he's just absolutely put on a stripe show. And I'm just like, wow. And at that time, I was probably an 18 handicapper. And I yeah. just thought, incredible. Uh, so he's probably, well, Jimmy's the best, but then Dwight. And well, last time I spoke to Dwight, a good story about Dwight is that He's really close to Sergio Garcia. All right. And Sergio asked Dwight to be his caddy. And uh, Dwight turned it down. And I'm thinking, <laughs> you've got no commitment. You've got no wife. That is the dream job to be a caddy. That's like, why? You get 10% of what they earn. They earn over 20, 30 million a year. That would have been, you go to the... What, he asked him to be his caddy full caddy time? Yeah. He said no. He's that close to Dwight. Dwight. And Dwight, obviously, at the time, Dwight was probably trying to be a manager or a coach or something and turned it down. But... Yeah, he could have been Sergio, and he's obviously Sergio went on and won the Masters. Dwight could have been a caddy <laughs> rocking Sergio's green jacket. That's one of the best stories I've ever yeah, heard on the Four Challenge. Now me, wow! <laughs> if Tiger Woods asked me to be a caddy, <laughs> yeah, I might true. say to my wife, "Yeah, I love you, lot. Sorry, you love. <laughs> yeah, it's over. Me and Tiger. Right, here's my ball. Yeah. Dwight York, what are you doing? Right. Don't tell me you can see a gap. No. <laughs> You've got a shot, remember? Yeah. I've got a shot. It's about course management. So, seven iron. What are you hitting? Seven iron along the floor. Oh, when an 18 golfer, 18 handicap golfer is talking about hitting it under the trees and that. <laughs> I've been, one thing I've learned from doing the four old challenge is course management, because normally I would try and smash it through there. Decent. I want to get better, Kieran, I want to get better. Watch me hit the tree now. <laughs> Clever. I like it. Good shot. What a guy. What a legend. Oh no, oh. you dup. Get in the bunker. Absolute shanks and Bigfoot. So obviously, uh, playing off five, you must get invited to loads of uh, programs and stuff, Kieran. I do. Uh, yeah. It's one of the perks of our occupations. Yeah. Uh, but I've never, never took them up on it. Um, really? As you can see on the second shot, I don't like the pressure of playing in front of a crowd uh, because I'm always scared of topping a ball and making a clown of myself. It's crazy. It just And you've played in front of 60,000, you played in Yeah, Champions but again, League. we talked about it. In front of 60,000, I know I'm good at football. So it's, I know that I can shank the ball or hook one, snap hook one out of bounds, and it's quite embarrassing. Oh, <laughs> not embarrassing. So, uh, yeah. Uh, Everyone always says to me, even like, say if we were playing on the second hole and someone was in the trees and they call you through, I'm like, oh my God, please hit it straight. Please don't. Do you know? You I'm, not, I'm like that. I'm not like, no, it's right. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. You, you just do. He's like, please don't let me through because you've got to watch it. I'm so like that. But at home, I bet you you guys are like that as well. So comment right. down below. The slowest four ball could be and they're calling you through and I'm like, no, nah, it's okay. No, it's all right. I can't believe that. My legs are like that. Yeah. It's crazy. Right. I'm going to go 56. Decent. Come on. Oh my God, what a shot. <laughs> what a shot. <laughs> Honestly. Get me on those pro-ams. Honestly, mate. <laughs> I had check and everything. Oh, Left yourself it. an up -hiller. Oh, I love it. Do you watch golf as well? Do you like watching it now? Or? Uh, no, I do like watching it, but 
the Ryder Cup for me is the one you yeah. just have to watch. I, I don't. I wouldn't. If there's a game of football on a Saturday night, yeah, I'd sit down and watch that. But I probably wouldn't just watch a normal sort of like match play. Yeah. But if it's like the Ryder Cup, the Masters, I'm all the over. Masters, it. of course, yeah. So good. But how about you? Do you watch? I watch golf. Well, well you are a golf porn star, aren't yeah, you? Yeah, I watch golf. I probably watch golf and boxing just as much as I watch football. Seriously? Yeah. yeah. Love my boxing as well. I've heard. Love my boxing. Ask Lee Boda. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Right, I might show off and try a little flop shot on a tight lie. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> flop shot on that. Crazy, I'll try. No, nope. hit the flag. Oh, mm. not good. Should have just done a chip. Let you in. Oh, could be one nil up on the old four old challenge. Come on. You're not really saying. No, See no, if that was me. I'll like... be going. Come on, going. Please. No, stuff no, it. no. I like when people do well. Decent. So you want to win when I'm playing well? Yeah. Nice. It's got a chance, it's got a chance, it's got a chance. <laughs> oh. Sensational scenes. Kieran said the greens are slower. Up. In whoa, whoa, whoa. The park goes right to left from, from where you are. Yeah. So you want to be aiming probably around me. Got you. You can't really see it yet. That's it. Oh, no. Oh, no, Ooh, no, no. Oh, no. no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. <sighs> For the win. For the win. Good part. Oh! I'll give you that part. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Nil nil. Hole one done. So Kieran, talk to me about uh, Money Mayweather. Yeah, so obviously I've had a lot of injuries in my career and uh, probably one of the perks that came from that is that because they were such long-term injuries, managers would let me have like long weeks off or long weekends off. So I went to watch a lot of super fights. So yeah. I was fortunate enough to watch Mayweather Hatton, Mayweather Cotto, Mayweather Pacquiao. Uh, been to a lot of super fights in Vegas and there was one, I think, I think it was the Cotto fight and um, there was this guy we knew who was really close to Carlton Cole, Big Tony yeah. and he used to be a DJ for um, 50 Cent and obviously 50 Cent and uh, Fly used to be best mates so after the fight Tony rings me up and says oh what are you doing? I said oh, I'm just going to probably go to one of the big clubs in Vegas he yeah. said oh, come and meet me everyone's going back to the champs so two champs, he goes, everyone's going back to flights. So literally, I've met him and I've turned up at Flight's house. It was just like, must have been about 200 people in the house. He's got, because he's won about 11 championships, he had all these belts just on tables. Like, there was no hardly any sign of him. You know how many women he walks around yeah, yeah. There was women everywhere. I could have just nicked one of the belts. I could have done what I want. I'm just walk, thinking, I'm walking around Flight's house. Like, it was very surreal, very, very surreal. So yeah, good guy. I've spoke to him before. I didn't really see him that night, but I've spoke to him. Uh, I've gone to see him spar a couple of times, uh, seen him train. For all his bravado and for for everything about Floyd, he just wants to be loved. If you know what I mean. Yeah, I know yeah. he plays the bad guy role, but I just got the feeling that he wanted to be loved. Yeah, yeah. it was. It was. And then you see all the money getting thrown and the cars and the bad boy, and I just yeah. thought there's more to him. He's a very complex character. Fair but dude. yeah. I rocked around in his Hello, house. Hello, Floyd, if you're watching. Yeah. <laughs> you get a shot here as yeah, well, pal. Yeah, get a shot on this. Right, let's try, try not to free part. part. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, is this another one? <laughs> Look at the one. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
<laughs> just the irons now, no? Though. Loving it. Right, here we go. Come on. Oh no. Oh, stop. Yeah, you're right. We're good. You're right. I won't make, reach the out of bounds. Absolute. You're there for nothing again. Hooksville. Course management. Hooksville. So, Kieran, you were at um, Ipswich uh, doing the under 18s. Uh, yeah. how, how was that for you? I was doing it for a year, yeah. and that was perfect because I learned a lot. Um, but it got to the stage at the end where you spend more time with parents ringing up about their sons not playing and you're having to deal with agents with kids who are not even played in the first team and yeah, yeah. Doing a, dealing with a lot of stuff that kind of wasn't on the training pitch and I started to hate it. Oh really? Yeah. yeah. You just wanted to do the football? Yeah, football, I just want to do yeah. the coaching and like you pick a team, if you're doing a men's team or a first team or even the under 23s where they're men, you can pick a team and you ain't got to worry about parents saying, ringing up on the Monday saying, why is my son not playing and you favour this player and just got a bit, I enjoyed it, don't get me wrong, yeah. the kids, the kids was buzzing from me, I was buzzing from them, I think it's a great place to learn your trade because it's not about results really, is it? Development. Like, yeah, so yeah. it's development. Um, so it's like you can you can have you can make mistakes yeah. without being punished. But I just thought it was time for me to move on and uh, try and get into the men's side of the game, whether it be twenty threes or in a first team environment. But is the main aim to become a gaffer? Yeah, my my ultimate job would be Ipswich Town. Uh, yeah, Ipswich Town first team. Be amazing. Uh, yeah, uh, with this movement at the moment, with this BL BLM. Yeah, it's Black Lives. Uh, matters movement. I really feel that feel that this is a proper movement and change will happen. Yeah. Uh, I think we will get opportunities. Um, Souls obviously had a couple of opportunities, but um, now that black players are seeing this positivity, I yeah. think that they will start applying for more jobs. And um, yeah, look out! I'll be coming for Frank when I take <laughs> Ipswich from Division 1 to the Premier League. Absolutely, I <laughs> love that. But you're on Ipswich Legends, aren't you? You were, you know, as a youngster at Ipswich, like, the wonder kid. But it's a lot different now, isn't it? How the youngsters get treated to back when you were young. Because didn't one of the senior pros once stand in the changing yeah. room, himself, we, and then said, clean it up? So basically, I... Because I was, like you said, I was a talented kid. I was training with the first team when I just turned 17. Um, and I was in the youth team. And I used to dread training with the first team because I thought I was better than half of them anyway. You so probably were I, though, weren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so when I went and trained with them, yeah. like they couldn't get near me and I was just full of energy and you know what I mean? It was, And some of the senior players didn't like it and there was one senior player I would love to name him, but I couldn't name him in the book because I could have got sued and stuff. But um, he comes in after training and he's completely stripped off. He's just in his slip and he comes in, he starts straining. I think, is he Hulk Hogan? Is he starting to do the Hulk? You know, he's he's going to give me a body slap in a minute. And then next thing I just see like the weep going down his leg into a puddle and he's still straining. And I'm thinking, and the next thing he's taking a dump in his, well, a in his slip and he just takes it off and he just splats it on the floor and he says clean it up and there's me like having to find gloves and oh it was and it stunk vile and it was just like that was the environment it was it was like um you had to keep the young kids grounded and it was kind of like in a bullying way which you could never do that in today's football never ever but that's just i mean that's outrageous isn't it it is outrageous but because the, cause they say the kids have got it too easy now, and I get that. <laughs> yeah, but when they were talking about jobs and stuff, kids don't even do the jobs and they don't clean the changing rooms or and stuff like that. They have it very easy, and they're saying the way we had it, it kind of kept you grounded. But you've read my book, and there was a story. We went to a major tournament uh, in the Under Twenty World Cup, and when we got yeah. knocked out of the tournament, we all decided as players. So this is like the cream of England. We all decided that we thought it was banter that we all shit in a plastic bag, pass the bag around, shit in this bag, and then hang it on our manager's door. 
like and then it, but is that through the environment that we've grown up the way we course. see it exactly and it's just like and i always used to say you wonder why the england teams haven't won stuff like some of the stuff and just absolute knobs we were but <laughs> we were we were just absolute knobs but that was just the norm that was just like you thought that was fun and bantering the more you think about it when i when i read that story out and even like my ghostwriter for the book was going, he just couldn't yeah. believe it. What yeah. am I writing? Did you... And I didn't take a dump in the bag, and no. I was, but it was only because I didn't need a dump. Because <laughs> if I had needed a dump, I'd have been one of the first. That's what I mean. It's just like you can't make it up. Oh, oh it's crazy. What a story. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> Three-part territory. <laughs> Three-part territory, he's saying. Oh. It's all over it. <laughs> this is absolute golf at its finest. Oh, oh my, my God. God. Are you winding me up or what? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> this could be my first birdie dance on the oh four-hole challenge. Oh, my God. I'm way short. <laughs> oh. I can't believe this. 18. <laughs> you should feel embarrassed, by the way. You should feel absolutely embarrassed. You're the five handicapper, and I'm the 18. Oh, wowzers. What a shot, by Thanks, the way. Thanks, mate. What did you hit? Eight iron. Very good. I seriously can't believe that. Look at it, look at it. Very, very good. <laughs> so basically, I've got to hold this and hope for a, hope for a miracle. Well, oh, that's weak. Oh, that's weak. Mm. <laughs> oh, mate, I'm so buzzing. Even if I miss this, you still got to try and make the birdie, ain't you? Decent, decent, <laughs> lovely par, Alan par, oh, fantastic. Look at he, he's so buzzing. <laughs> right, Kieran, on this channel, if, the, if, I get a, if anyone gets a birdie, it's the birdie dance. Oh, oh here we go. <sighs> I'm so scared. <laughs> miss, please miss. I'm so please scared. Miss. <laughs> I'm one down. One nil. So on the subject of managers, Kieran. Yeah. You played for some unbelievable managers, but the best has to be. Sir Bobby Robson. Yeah, Sir Bobby by miles. Uh, what a legend the bloke was. Legend, absolutely. Everyone loved him. What can you say about the man? There's a, there's a great story about Bobby, and I've mentioned Charlie Woods, who I gave my clubs to early. He was like um, Sir Bobby's best friend. And uh, so he was coach at Ipswich with him, and then when Bobby went to different clubs, he was then became his scout. And Charlie was with him on his deathbed when he was dying. So um, Charlie said this story at, uh, at Sir Bobby's golf day at his foundation to raise money. And uh, so it was about four o'clock, five o'clock in the morning and there's Bobby in his bed in a real bad way. Lady Elsie's wife and Charlie. And Charlie's eyes are like, it's time for him to, to go home and get some sleep. So he's like, Lady Elsie, oh, I'm gonna try and get some sleep and come back. So. Bobby's, like I said, he's got hours to live. And uh, Charlie gets in his car and he's now driving out of Sir Bobby Robson's house. And he gets to the gates and he's driving, his phone goes. So five o'clock in the morning, it flashes up, gaffer. So he's thinking, oh, the worst, obviously, Lady Elsie must yeah, be yeah. ringing. He rings up and it was, hello? Sir Bobby, Charlie, make sure you get home safe, mate. Make sure you get home safe. So, Everything you need to know about like 
on your deathbed and you're still worrying about other people, caring about, and it's just like, that is that that story for me sums up Bobby Robson that. What a guy, absolute, what a guy. Best manager by far, and it weren't again, wasn't his tactics, he weren't a coach, he was just man, man like, you look at people like Mesut Ertel, like all that talent and no managers play him and they can't get the best out of him. If Bobby Robson had him, he'd be like, he'd be like the player he was when he had Ronaldo. At, he'd just be putting on the assist left, right and centre. Yeah. Because this is the guy. I've seen players go into his office, get dropped, come out, they're buzzing. They think they're, they're the best player in the world because he's just got this uncanny knack. And he had, a, by the way, he had the hairdresser in him, by the way. Yeah, well, he, this is why, because in your book you say that, you know, so Bobby didn't normally lose it that much, but no. he absolutely so, got you, didn't Yeah, he? so there was a, a story, there was, a, we had a coach, Mick, and um, we were, had this game, and Lua Lua and Shola were playing. But so was Gary Speed and the senior players, and this coach started absolutely losing it on Lua Lua and Shola, who were really nervous, they're young, it was first game. But Gary Speed and Shearer were having crap games, but yeah. they were the easy targets. And because of what happened to me as a kid, I was like, I had this defence mechanism, like, I'm not letting you pick on the weak and vulnerable. So I've started going mad at this coach. And he's like, who do you think you are? And who do I, who do, who do you yeah. think you are? And blah, blah, blah. And then Bobby just went, sit your little ass down. Went absolutely mad. Honestly, I've never seen Bobby lose it like that. I then start crying in anger and frustration, take off my shirt, I'm not playing anymore. And so I get in the shower crying. Gary Speed's telling me to come back on and like, come on, don't worry, and that you were, and I was like, no, I'm not playing. Mick, Mick I was Mick Wadsworth, it Mick's a dick and blah, 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 blah. Then one of a sudden Bobby comes in. So Bobby's just absolutely hammered me. He comes in, into me in the shower and he goes, well done, son. <laughs> I'm like, he went, it was unbelievable what you did sticking up for them. Yeah. I absolutely love it, but I can't have you speaking to my staff like that. So that's why I had to put you in your place. But trust me, what you did was right. So he just diffused the situation. Okay. His coach feels empowered. I feel, feel empowered. empowered. It's just unbelievable. Just little stories like that. It's just incredible. So Bobby Robson, yeah. legend. <laughs> you don't get a shot here. Yeah? <laughs> thank, thank goodness. Can I have a shot? <laughs> oh, I still can't believe I've got a birdie. You liar. Uh, no, honestly, that's the first time I got a birdie on the four-hole challenge. Yeah? Oh, my goodness. I Mate, can't. your driving is a joke. That's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Did you get that again? <laughs> he loves her drive straight down the middle. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, anything, stay there, stay there. Anything but a hook. Oh, I think I... Ooh. I'm not driving well, but I've got a birdie. <laughs> yeah. So we've had uh, Sir Bobby, the best, absolute legend, and proper love that story about what he did when... Yeah. You know, it's amazing. Incredible. Um, but also, Graham Sooner said he was going to punch you, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was after I mentioned earlier on the first about Lee Bayer when we had the infamous scrap. I'm more famous for that than... Actually playing football, you know. Like, do you know what? Do you know what, Kieran? You're one hell of a player, mate. I mean, yeah. you're not more famous for yeah. the fight. But uh, yeah, so we we get sent off, and we're in the change room, and he comes in. I swear, he was a scary man. The first thing he said is, "I'm now going to watch the video back, and if I think I'm going to see what, basically, he was saying, I think I know what I'm going to see, and if it's right, then I'm going to come back. And I'm going to fight both of you. So get ready." <laughs> So they're like, I'm going, oh no. He literally storms out of the changing room, <laughs> goes to find the camera to watch it back. And then he comes storming through again. And I'm thinking, and then he just like exempt me from any blame. Because obviously Lee was the one who like kind of threw punches. Yeah, threw windmills, wasn't he? Yeah, and he was like, you, you little sh and and, Oh, but he was a scary man. Like I said, he was the only manager I was scared of. Yeah. And, uh, there was this spell, because sometimes people get it misconstrued when I, uh, they think, when I say I played my best football under him, that I'm having a knock at Sir Bobby. No, I, but that period with soon as I had like a six to eight months where I was like eight out of 10 every yeah. week, just like bang, bang, bang. And it was, it was like just a fear factor, I think, but we got on so well. Yeah. Got on so well in, 
I just felt so sorry for him when he got sacked because he, he built, he was now building a team around me and Michael Owen. We were like the two players he trusted and we can never stay fit. Yeah. And then like a year later he gets sacked and you kind of feel guilty like that we weren't on the pitch to help him. But yeah, he's a, should have seen him in the gym because he obviously had these, he had a triple bypass and yeah. he had this big sky. He always used to have the top off and he was in the gym and he was just, <laughs> oh he was like, he was lifting weights and doing weights that I'd only seen Duncan Ferguson yeah. do and Duncan Ferguson was an absolute hardest footballer ever. Really? Yeah, is, it, is he that Ferguson. scary, Duncan Ferguson? Yeah, he definitely. Is he, is he a lunatic? See, when you say lunatic, like, I can only judge on what him, I, Have you seen I, him lose it? I can, yeah, once with Pistoni, we were playing a five a side <laughs> and it was towards the end of training and Pistoni must have said, f**k you, Dunk. And literally, there was still about 10 minutes to go in the five a side. So everyone's running around it and Dunk's just standing like this, just eye contact and Pistoni like this wherever he run. <laughs> Honestly, literally. He was on the pitch. Yeah, literally, not moving, not even testing. Just like every time Pistoni was just like not taking his eyes off him like this. <laughs> and I'm like, look at like, And then Pistoni's like, I was starting to clock it. <laughs> literally, as soon as he's training, you have the warm down. Pistoni <laughs> ran straight into the. He ran straight into the. Um, uh, the physio room to like take off his thing. I thought I'm following you. <laughs> I want to see where this is going. <laughs> so we're sitting in the in the treat room. All of a sudden, the doors open. Dunk outside now. <laughs> He was like, no, don't, no, no, <laughs> outside now. <laughs> please, like, no, don't, please, honestly, don't. he started to cry. And Dunk, I remember it was so chill. He just said, if you ever, ever tell me to f off again, you are finished. And then just walked out and I was just like, oh my God, that don't mess with Duncan, man. Don't mess with Duncan. <laughs> and but now you see him now as a coach and he seems so mellow. He's I love really, his yeah, yeah, he's fantastic. I think he'll definitely go on to manage Everton in the future. Yeah, I hope so. Oh, he's, a, he's absolutely Like brilliant. I said, it's our, hopefully it's our era of. Yeah, yeah you are, you're right. Oh, yeah. No, that's not me. I'm not going to lie. Oh, that's not me. Nice little Callaway, though. Let's <laughs> come in here somewhere. Let's have a look. Instead of going for the green in two now, I might just lay up. So being what, I should, what I should have done there was no. No, you don't have a shot. a shot here. Yeah, you had to go. Yeah, you had to get your drive off. Fair enough. Do you and Lee Bowyer look back at that time when you had the fight on the pitch and just go, what a couple of legends? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know really. I don't. I'm not really. We've never really had a proper conversation. I see. When was the last time I see? I seen Lee. Lee but he's. We had a Charlton under 23s, the Ipswich under 23s. I, I went to watch and he's obviously Charlton manager and came down. Yeah. And we just talk normal stuff. He's. Oh, he might have found your ball. Oh. Oh, where? Oh, no, you can't be Is doing it colourful? this. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, got a little triangle. Right <laughs> 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 back in. Yes, Carl. He's found me ball. Do you know what you and Lee Bowyer should do? You should do a one off special goggle box. Where you both watch sit, it, yeah. both sit down and watch that. What Gary Neville's been doing with yeah. players, yeah. That would be interesting, yeah. I'm going to set that up. Who wants to see that? Because I've done I'll a lot. I'll set of... that up. Comment down below if you want to see a goggle box with Kieran Dyer and Lee Bowyer watching the. Uh, <laughs> because scraps. I don't think he's really come out and like obviously because I had the book and I've done a lot of TV and stuff. I talk about it quite a bit. Yeah. And like I say, I was in the wrong when I say you're the reason I don't pass you the ball is because you're. <laughs> that's what. But it would be interesting to see his point of view, like if you know what led up to. Yeah. Yeah, be interesting. Goggle box? Goggle box all day. What should we call yeah, it? Yeah, but he might start attacking me again. <laughs> no, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> might have to hide no, behind the couch. It's called Goggle Box. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. <laughs> not, if you're not up for it, just say. <laughs> so here he is in the undergrowth with his second shot, because young fellow found the ball. He's out. Shot. Good. Yep, yeah, you're right. It's all right. Yeah, that's fine. Well, what can I do? Apparently, Joe Barton's not a good golfer as well, by the way. I've heard Joe Barton's unbelievable. Yeah, I've heard he's a good golfer. What about your mate, um, Alan Shearer? He he's good as well. Him. He's he's off about five four, five or four. Wow. I'd love to get Joey Barton on the old four-hole challenge. He's so I good. like Joey. He's misunderstood. He's a misunderstood character. I've met him a few times and I really like him. He's top guy. Yeah. He's just opinionated and some people don't like that, do they? And pretty hard. 
He can come on Gogglebox. <laughs> yeah. I remember. He he uh, he was going to uh, speak to Eddie about him and Mark Wright having a charity little punch up. Yeah. Yeah. Eddie Earn was all over that, if you can imagine. Bet he was. Oh, look at Ah, oh, bunker. That's over, isn't it? No, there's a bunker oh. just by the green. Not a bad shot, though. Um, we've mentioned it a couple of times, but your book, mm. absolutely first class. Cheers. Um, if you haven't read it, guys, there's a link down below. Go and buy it. It's one of the best football books ever. It's so honest, isn't it? Yeah, well, but how that came about is uh, me and Craig Bellamy are quite close to uh, Oliver Holt. Yeah who obviously a journalist who writes books and when we went to Craig's book launch Oliver Holt was saying how like uh, how honest Craig's book was and and I'd read Craig's book and I was thinking that is a watered down version if you know what I mean <laughs> that's not the real Craig yeah and I said that's watered down and he was like really I said if I ever did a book I'd be like honest and yeah. lay it all out there and then people can see you strip back and be the judge of who you really are and that's how it came about and it was a project we kept saying we were going to do it and and then obviously when I had the spell in the jungle when we came out we thought it was the perfect time and yeah the book was received well and like you said the first thing a lot of people talk about is is honesty but it's so powerful you're yeah. so honest and, and in the book you say you know you don't think you you know you underachieved and stuff like that but like you mentioned back there what happened to you when you were a youngster yeah I think you smashed life and your career because, you know, obviously what happened to you was, it was just, well, it's disgraceful, really. Yeah, so I do think with the ability and if I would have showed more dedication and discipline in, with regards to what I ate, not drinking so much and blah de blah that I could have gone on to bigger and better things. But then if you look at a lot of children who have been sexually abused at a young age, a lot of these people are homeless. Mm. A lot of these people go off the rails, they're in and out of prison. So for me to overcome that, basically on my own, didn't have no help, didn't tell no one, to overcome that and then to go on to represent your country is still an unbelievable achievement. So in a weird kind of way, I underachieved, but I over over have achieved, if, if, you, if you know what I mean. So uh, yeah, um, that's why I said in the book, yeah, I, yes, a lot of people say I underachieved, but to come, to get over that and to have the career I did, uh, it's incredible. It's incredible. Great, mate. Cheers, Respect. mate. But when I when I came out and said about you know I'm an alcoholic and I've got a massive drink problem, as soon as I told people that, and I had the guts to say, look, I've got a massive problem. I can't control my alcohol. Straight away, it was like, Phew. yeah, of you course, know, it's therapeutic. Yeah, was it the same for you? Of did, course. Did you, was your, did your life get about hundred times better? It was therapeutic, and uh, again. People just see the effect, they don't see the cause. So they just, well with me, they, they see a, they called me a, a brat, a soccer brat, uh, the Bentley boy, the king of bling, but they didn't see the cause. And because of what happened to me when I was a kid, I built up this personality, I had a f you personality. Because I'd taken advantage as a kid, no one was ever gonna take advantage of me as an adult. No. I was never gonna show vulnerability. I was very stubborn. I'd fall out of people just like that because I couldn't show any kind of weakness. And because of this, this character that formed, I, I must have looked like an absolute, like I said, a bell end. Yeah. I think, but once I started to realise what, why I was becoming this, why all these boundaries, why I was acting like this, and got the help, it didn't only just help me. It helped all people around me, because when right. I told them the story, they go, oh, now it makes sense, if you know what I mean. So it's not, it weren't just therapeutic for me, it kind of helped like even my ex-partners who I could never commit to 100% because I had trust issues, my family who I'd fall out with. And again, when we're talking about the effect and the cause with you, when you sent me over the thing today and you said you're an alcoholic, I couldn't believe it because your personality from just me seeing you from Soccer AM in, in person is, it was like you didn't have, you just didn't have any problems in your life. You were the funniest guy. You was like, every day was so sunshine for you. Yeah, yeah. So then again, you hid that so well in a way that 
you are fighting your own demons and you just never know. And uh, like I said, I'm, I'm so happy that you've seeked the help and you've come out because you can only become a better person for it. Definitely. Love you. Cool. What a man. 106 yards. 106. So 60 is not good then, is it? Would you say 56 here, Karen? We've got the wind a bit. Gap wedge? I'd hit a 56. Mind you, you're double I'd rather be short than long on this hole. Fair do. So, right, this needs to... This is my full shot. Yeah, you just got up and down. You, <laughs> you, is this par you, five? Yeah. Oh, it is? Yeah. You usually get up and down with a... An eight iron. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, no, a bit right. Can it kick off the bank? Oh, oh. you're in the bunker with me, I think. <laughs> Mm. Get my bucket and spade. Go out, Kieran, what's your bunker game like? <laughs> mm. <laughs> I don't want to say yet. Yeah. I'll hit the shot first. <sighs> uh -oh. Go. That's average. <laughs> Mate. I'll take that, though. I'll ask you again. What's your bunker game like? Horrific. <laughs> Right, here we go. Definitely need to get this in. Or close. Oh, I didn't hit it. Didn't hit it. Putting's been an absolute abysmal today. Come on, mate, par. Birdie? Birdie! Oh! It's got a chance. <laughs> Unbelievable, love this. Right, Kieran. Yeah. Uh, it's all square, one to play on the whole challenge. What is this? This is a 219 yard par three. You have water in front of the green. I've seen handicap, two, three handicappers laying up on this hole because it is a card wrecker. I get a shot. But you're not allowed to lay up, apparently. Oh my God. Go. Oh my God. Oh man. <laughs> 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 Jesus Christ, I mean, this hole is a joke, isn't it? Positive thinking, come on. Positive thinking. <sighs> oh my God. Fuck! the chicken dance now <laughs> in the book you say you were the, the king of bling you said back yeah, there yeah yeah you did love a night out didn't you oh. yeah we did well to be fair there one, one thing i will say we never broke the rules so some clubs would be like 72 hours before a game some clubs are 48 hours before a game you like was the cut off for going out yeah so if we had a game on a saturday and we'd never go out on a thursday if you know what i mean but yeah. whenever we were allowed a night out we would have a night out, so, uh, and what was, because we had so many young players at Newcastle, myself, Titus, Craig Bellamy, Jermaine Genus, Jonathan Woodgate, Shola, Luar Luar, we had it. such a young squad, and Nobby Solano as well, who would play his trumpet at one o'clock yeah. in the morning, <laughs> you get to bed after a night out, <laughs> your phone so a, a ring at four o'clock in the morning, it's Nobby playing the trumpet down the phone, <laughs> bloody hell Nobby. What a legend. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. And what was the best night out you've ever had? Mind you, Floyd Mayweather's probably. No, yeah. the best, again, uh, speak, speaking to you off camera, and I like to, I like to like represent Ipswich because I'm an Ipswich boy and everyone calls Sleepy Suffolk and that. So when I went on the jungle, I like to represent obviously myself and my family, but I also like to represent Ipswich. So I love this. I throw part, I used to throw parties like the best of the best parties in Ipswich. Yeah. So I'd like invite 200 people of all Ipswich people, family and friends. Spoonie obviously would help me plan. Yeah. Um, so there was one part in particular I'd, I had a, it was a fancy dress party. I would give like money 
a money prize for the best dressed. Um, it was a free bar. We had a member from Britain's Got Talent, Kojo, the comedian. Yeah. He came, he did a stand up act. Then I had um, the original Dream Team come with oh. MC, PSG, MC, DT, and Creed, like the Godfathers. They'd do an hour set. Then I had the Heartless crew. Then I flew Donnell Jones over from America. <laughs> I flew Ja Rule over from America. Shut I swear. Up. Ja, you know how many hits Ja Rule had back in the day as well. Yeah. And like, he's got a lot of, um, he's got a lot of songs with uh, like the J-Lo's and the Ashanti's and girls were getting up on stage with Ja Rule and they were singing the girl bits. And so Wait, I this had- This is insane, this was in Ipswich. Yeah, Ipswich, in Ipswich I hired a, a, a proper club. I had all these artists come over, again, not just for me to enjoy, but for all my, my Ipswich people to enjoy. And then to finish the night off with the last 45 minutes because I used to love Jungle back yeah. in the day as well. We, we had, jungle is massive, yeah. <laughs> we had DJ Brocky, MC Deck come down and that was like the ultimate party and finished about three o'clock and like people still talk, all the Ipswich people still talk about that party. So that was probably the best party ever. And, that, and it was in Ipswich and that was just like, like, Ja Rule and Donald, Donald Jones got hits for days, mate. It was just like, wow. <laughs> you wouldn't just throw Donald Jones oh, Well, mate, the game of Spoonie. So Spoonie planned my wedding. So when I got married, nearly six years of marriage, yeah. Spoonie was our, um, he planned our whole wedding. Um, he did a fantastic job. He was going to do, I think he should do that. I said, with my contacts with footballers and that. Yeah. Because when you go to these wedding planners, they rip you and who yeah. are so out. Well. Yeah. They like take the piss and footballers pay that kind of money. And yeah. Spoonie with his contacts, like for flying over Donnell Jones, how much do you reckon for Donnell Jones and Ja Rule to come over? Like how much do you reckon Ja Rule with all the hits for him to come over? He's got to be a good cool 70 grand, $5,000. Shut up. $5,000, obviously you have to pay for their flights, but Donnell Jones, I'm um, sorry, Ja Rule's with $5,000 for a guy who had that many hits. And that's game. I don't know if it's through Spoonie's contacts or whatever. It's got to be, isn't it? You yeah. don't get Ja Rule for exactly. five, gra so five I, grand. So if there's any footballers out there watching this and you're planning a christening or a wedding, yes, DJ uh, Spoonie's a DJ, but he can also plan the best party ever. Party planner. Ever. Honestly, he's get ridiculous. Get on it, yeah. Five grand, I'll pay him to do that to come Great, to a four honestly, old challenge. He <laughs> That's it, Ja Rule. Me up. He's in the game still. <laughs> oh, please do the lottery this week. <laughs> he's got to do the lottery. Look, he's, hey, look at that. He's got a perfect oh, life. Oh, have a word, though. Well, I wouldn't say perfect. But well, you've got a little gap through there. Is that a lake down there? Like, like, yeah, that, that, the red there? ditch is full of gunky water. You don't want to be going in there. You really want to try and go through them trees. If not, lay up short here and then try and get up and down. And then we're... Then we're uh... And then we're as it lays. So as it as it lays. Decisions, decisions. Because you've got the old punchy under trees and all that, you know. Because <laughs> I can just put it on my back foot and punch it under trees. <laughs> oh, I've got to go for it, haven't I? Right, I've got to pull a shot out here that's better than the approach on the second, I think. Because look at this. Look at the gap I've got to go through. There's the dance floor. Lake. Pond, bunker, trees. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, and I'm up against the tree as well. <laughs> Come on, please. Look at the silence, <laughs> anticipation. <laughs> Ellis out of bounds. <laughs> it's gone in the shit. <laughs> By the way, you can drop it from your knee, remember? I'll let you have another drop. Oh, really? Yeah. New to the game, you see. Drop it from my knee? Yeah, just drop it All so right. you can. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a great drop. <laughs> uh, oh. That is the highs and lows of golf though, isn't it? Mm. Birdie. I've dropped, no, I found the other one, didn't I? Come on. Go. 
Oh no, I've absolutely fallen to pieces here. What is going on? We've oh. got to chip it in, pal. <laughs> Just imagine if you did, though. Final question, a question yep. that I ask everyone on the four hole challenge, Kieran. If you could have a caddy, anyone, past or present, caddy for the day, who would it be? Can't they play with me? <laughs> <laughs> that would be Tiger all day. Tiger. Tiger all day. I. Oh, what is going on here? Yeah, Tiger all day. I have got like. I said like Fly Maven, but Tiger Woods is probably the ultimate hero for me. I know everything about all his major wins, what year. Just know, like, I'm know all the knowledge of him. Oh, so you're pro you proper know your tiger? Uh, well, so I proper know tiger, yeah. Yeah. So. Oh wow. You can ask me anything about any of his majors and tell you that he won. We've got to sort you out meeting him. I've had no idea how we're going to do it. Oh, but if you met Tiger, that would be on my bucket list. There's two things on my bucket list: one to play around with Tiger Woods, and two is to go to, which I will do eventually, is go to a WrestleMania, front row at WrestleMania. Yeah. I love my wrestling. Do you? Yeah. If you smell <laughs> what the rock oh, is cooking. cooking. Oh my god, rock is another one. Amazing. Unbelievable. Imagine a three ball with the rock and tiger. Oh my god. <laughs> I'd even let him do give me the rock bottom and the people's elbow. God, just just give me the people's elbow, please. Uh, <laughs> right. You, you got can, a chip you in. Can, you can give me the people's elbow if yes. you, when, when you win. Give it a chance. Not so bad. Good. Not so good. The main man. So what's that? I need birdie. Free, free for the win. Basically, game over. Yep. Oh, Avil, you are no way, no way, no way, no do way. Do, 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 do. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of the best shots I've ever seen in my life. Oh, what a way to win. That is sensational. Oh, God. <laughs> that has got to be one of the best four hole challenges ever done on this channel. I've just and, broke his ribs. And uh, I've got people's elbowed. That is the best shot ever oh. on the four hole challenge. Mate, that was. Brilliant. So good, mate. Thank you so much for doing Thank it. Thank you. Thank you. Like um, I said, I'm, I'm honoured that I got the call. Ah, really appreciate honored. it. Guys, if you've got to subscribe after that. <laughs> Come on. That's, that's unbelievable, mate. What a legend. Top I can't man. believe that. That's oh! incredible.